It is such an important day today, marking 18 years since the Srebrenica massacre. Some 8,000 Bosnian Muslim men and boys were killed by Bosnian Serb forces in the UN protected town. A service we've seen today has taken place at a special cemetery near Sarajevo to lay to rest newly identified victims. Thousands of people gathered, as you can see, in Srebrenica for the burial of more than 400 newly identified victims of the massacre there in 1995 during the Bosnian War. And what we know is that among those buried are more than 40 teenage boys and also a baby who was born during the massacre. Serb forces overran Srebrenica and killed more than 8,000 Bosnian Muslims in what was supposed to be a United Nations protected zone. These pictures from just a few hours ago near Sarajevo. With me here is Hassan Nahanovic, who survived the massacre, and Martin Bell as well, who was with the BBC. He was our principal correspondent during the war in Bosnia. Thank you both very much for joining us. Thank I know you. it's been... 18 years, you've probably relayed the story many times, but could you tell us again what you and your family went through 18 years ago? Well, having survived the first year of the war, which was actually <clears throat> the most difficult period in our lives, uh, the first year of the Bosnian war was 92, and the beginning of 93, we were without food, electricity, running water, completely surrounded by Serb forces from all sides and ethnically cleansed from our towns and villages. So Srebrenica for us in 92 was actually a, the safest place in the region. That's why we, we tried to, to go to Srebrenica and somehow we made it. And we stayed there uh, until the UN uh, finally declared it a UN safe area. So we thought, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 people at the time we thought we are the lucky ones because we survived, you know, the first 12 months of the war. Many uh, people did not, thousands did not survive. So we thought, okay, we are in the UN safe area and somebody's going to find some kind of a solution for us. So we'll, we'll be there for some time. And then one day somebody will come and save our lives, save us, take us to a safe, safer place. Or they will come to us and it will all be like before the war, like Bosnia and Herzegovina as a normal country. However, after two years, when the Dutch troops were there, uh, the Serbs launched a major attack again on this UN safe area. And six days later, they occupied the town and people tried to find shelter. The, the, the only logical decision at the, at the moment, on July 11th, when Srebrenica fell to the Serb hands, was to actually move towards the UN uh, Dutch battalion, uh, you know, peacekeepers uh, base, which was five, six kilometers north of Srebrenica. So we moved there. The Dutch allowed thousands of people to enter, 5,000 actually, to enter the base, <coughs> but they did not allow the others. So when the Serbs arrived, they started killing the men and the boys who were outside of the compound. We, the people inside the compound, we could see that happening. So we knew at the moment when we step out of the UN Dutch battalion compound, we will be killed. The, the Dutch, the day, the day after, the Dutch came to the big factory hall and told everyone inside that big factory hall, get out. Actually, they used me as their translator to, you know, uh, uh, to tell the people to leave the compound without giving them any alternative. They allowed me to remain on the compound because I was a UN local staff. They gave me the contract, you know, two years before, so the Dutch did not expel me, but they expelled my family. They expelled my parents and my brother. I was begging them to at least allow me keep, to keep my brother, he was 20 years old, inside the compound. That was the only safe place. The Serbs were all around waiting. So that when the people stepped out of the UN compound, they were separated like men and the boys from their you know, women and young children. Some of them were killed right there on the spot and some of them were taken to some other locations and killed there. This is what happened to my family. So this is how I lost my, my family uh, 18 years ago. Martin, when, when you hear this, does it still feel fresh to you, what you saw, what you wrote about and reported on? Um, yes, it does. But of course, we didn't know immediately, and Hassel will understand this, for weeks and even months, because we were excluded from, the, from, from the Serb territory at that time. And it was only when aerial satellite reconnaissance showed excavations in fields that we, we, we began to realise what had happened. It was a slow dawning of the reality. The only point I would add that this is one of the greatest shames in the history of the United Nations. 
at the time that uh, Hassan lost his family and all these people died, there were 30, more than 30,000 armed UN troops in Bosnia. What did they do? Nothing. The Dutch surrendered. So, I mean, the, 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 the UN now realizes it's one, of, it's one of its great shames. But we have to learn lessons. And that is why tonight, for the first time, there's going to be a remembering Srebrenica event in this yeah. country. Now, but Britain let's... is the first country outside of those former Yugoslav countries to have such a commemoration and such a moment. How important is it, do you think? Um, I think it matters. Um, I don't think we, this, 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 this doesn't have to be a, a, an occasion for, for denouncing the Serb people as a Serb people. People did what they did, and it was mostly armed units, and, and all Serbs are not responsible for that. And there was no monopoly of suffering and there was no monopoly of evil in the war. But this was the greatest single war crime in the continent of Europe since 1945. And it's absolutely right. We should remember it and learn from it. How do you feel 18 years on? You have fought for so long for not only yes. justice but yes. for truth. Yes. Where are you at in that, that journey for you? Have, have you found truth? Is there forgiveness anywhere in you now? Well, what I'm interested in uh, as a survivor and other survivors, I think, want the same thing is justice. You know, the, the ICTY, the tribunal in The Hague is still there. Let's see what they will do. If we, if we will see any justice, you know, in The Hague tribunal and if these perpetrators will be put behind the bars, this is what we want to see. Uh, but Mr. Bell mentioned the number of UN troops at the time when Srebrenica you know, genocide, massacre, was perpetrated. The, the, the commander of all those troops at that time was uh, British General Rupert Smith. That's right. I think we should remind people about that fact too. I, I spent the entire period of the war in, in Bosnia, 1995 in Srebrenica. Mm -hmm. You know, when we, when we, the survivors, those who survived the massacre, when we finally, you know, reached some other location safely, I was in central Bosnia in Tuzla, and this is when I learned what happened in other places in Bosnia. You know, I, I could hear about atrocities in other places and other locations during the war. And, uh, and you know, it's not only Srebrenica. When we speak of Srebrenica, there were uh, people there, like myself. I'm not from Srebrenica. I'm not, you know, an inhabitant of that town. I was from another town in the region. So we were forced from 10, 12, you know, counties in the whole region into Srebrenica by ethnic cleansing, uh, you know, perpetrated by the Serbs. So, so what is going on in The Hague now uh, 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 should confirm what I'm saying now. Uh, you know, even my, home, my own uh, uh, town called Vlasenica in the region was first ethnically cleansed and then we managed to escape to Srebrenica. There are other cities and villages in, this, in the region that, that, uh, mm, where, where the same things happened. Your, your reaction, Martin, and also to the whole process that takes place in The Hague, how important is it as a way of sort of building bridges or there being any kind of uh, reconciliation coming to peace with what happened? I've given evidence five times in The Hague, including the trial of um, Radovan Karadic, who actually called me a precious witness. Um, nobody can be convicted on newspaper headlines. It's the, the procedures have to be just and, and manifestly just, and in his case, they're extremely protracted. But I think this court will serve warning to other people and potential warlords in other war zones. Be very careful what you do, because there is a long arm now of international justice for the first time since the Nuremberg Tribunals.